first things, first things first. First things first. It's the 1960s. His name is William. William lives in a little small city in, outside of Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He has an, uh, a younger brother to this day. His brother is in every movie with him. They look nothing alike. His mom and dad are both actors. Well, actually, his dad is a producer. And as a result, this is what brings them from Oklahoma all the way back to Burbank. They want to be near Desilu Studios. And to be honest with you, so does William. He wants to be a child actor. And for the record, he is probably in the top ten child actors of all times, without question. As a matter of fact, brother and sister in Christ, you know what he'll tell you? First things first. I needed my dad or mom with me on every set because you just never know what you're going to be asked to do. And if it hadn't been for them, I would have been in trouble. On this day, I'm the same way with my children on the set. First things first. Well, like anything else, he wants to get a bit parts here and there, and he gets a part in a movie called Journey. Then he gets another bit part in The, um, the, the Loves of Doobie Gillis. Doby Gillis. I'm thinking Doobie Brothers, brother and sister in Christ. That's why I got that wrong. This is the third mass in a row. I got that one wrong. Doby Gillis. Then after that, he gets in another one called The Eleventh Hour. And, you know, they do okay. It was kind of give or take, but it was John Wayne is the one that sets the table in the movie The Shooters. And because he gets that one, he gets a movie in another movie called Night Shift with Henry Winkler. If you hadn't seen it, it's, it's quite the comedy. It's actually quite well. But then as a result of it, he, you know, he gets in this daytime, not, excuse me, not daytime, this comedy. And he does it for about, man, it's, I bet a decade. He becomes so popular. It goes back in the 50s and 60s. A lot of people call him Richie C. Man, I was hoping for a better response than that, but that's okay. As a result of it, next thing you know, his popularity starts to grow. But you know what does it for him, brother and sister in Christ? Is that opens the door. And he'll tell you, the only reason I acted is because I wanted to be a producer. Man, he's done and produced movies, Flash, Cocoon, Apollo 13. Man, A Beautiful Mind, which I got to tell you, is a great show. Then he also does Cinderella Man. He's doing Dark Towers. But matter of fact, he can't get away from it. Everybody knows him as Opie. <laughs> Opie of all people, Lord. That's right, my brother and sister in Christ. You know William. It's Ron William, Opie Howard, Ron Howard. All because, first things, first. That is exactly what that gospel is about. My brother and sister in Christ, think about what the good Lord does. The blind see, the lame walk, he's exercising demons. The first thing he does in the morning, before the sun even comes up, he goes off to be alone with him and his father. Prayer, brothers and sisters in Christ, first things first. Now, if you're a first century Jew, let's go back in the day. If Mark is not an apostle, the gospel writer, he's a follower of Peter and Paul. But as a result of it, Mark is, um, he's all about the facts. He's just stating the case. You see, he's a Gentile. He's responsible for preaching to Gentiles. So talking about Jewish history will do very little. But to a Gentile that's never met Christ, to hear the miracles. Matter of fact, you heard it today. He, the fever immediately left her. He uses that word some 40 or 50 times. He's talking about miracles every day, all day, in and out, twice on Sunday. Mark is all about trying to get you to understand that he is truly the Messiah. Now think, brothers and sisters in Christ, the blind see, the lame walk, and the dead rise. He's exercising demons, but yet he takes the time to remove a fever. You know why? Because it was important to Peter and his mother-in-law. And the good Lord would tell you and me the same thing. No matter how trivial you think it may be, if it's important to you, it's important to him. So you make sure and you pitch it to him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, remember this. Back in Scripture, the only people who knew Christ to truly be the Messiah, outside of probably her and him, without question, is Lucifer. This is why he's muting Lucifer and the demons, because people have free will, and so do you and I. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you begin to question whether the Eucharist is true, we're all going to walk through it. You're going to start questioning whether the Mass is true. You're going to start questioning this and that. Remember this one thing. That if you were to talk to a Satan worshiper and ask him, of which church do you want the host? 
He will tell you without reservation, there's only one. I need the host from the Catholic Church. He says, because I know he's physically present there. So brothers and sisters, when you have doubts whether this is true, go to his nemesis. That's why he silenced him, because he wants people to get there on their own free will. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to think for a second. Go back in Scripture. First things first. Some people pray. That's what they do. They start praying early and often. There are those people who pray once problems start. And then there are those of us who pray when the carnage is so great, he's the great lotto king. I might as well make a pitch now. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Those who pray early and often. Whew, Mary Magdalene. I might as well get up on Easter Sunday morning when nobody wants to go to the tomb of a dead Savior. And because she gets up early and often, she's the first to see the risen Christ. You ever ask yourself when John the Baptist is standing next to Andrew and John, and that's the other apostle, and he says, there goes the Lamb of God. They immediately follow him. So much so, the next day when the good Lord goes by, Andrew's already spoken to Peter and said, we've met the Messiah. That's why you in the creed, you see the second line, I believe in Jesus Christ, because he knew him right away, immediately. Do you know what they do? They immediately leave their nets, whether they were mending or fishing. They leave his dad actually in the boat. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that is talking about praying early and often. First things first. Then there are those, well, we pray once the problems start. That would be my boy Peter. Man, something has to happen. The storms come up. Man, the ship's going every which way. Lord, did you care we don't perish? Man, they've been in the storm for quite a while. Why does he wait so late? Because he thinks like you and I do, that we can solve this. We got game. I'm talented. You're a carpenter. I, I'm, I, mean, I mean, yeah, you're a carpenter. What do I need you? I'm a fisherman. And, but, and the good Lord rebukes the wind. It's inanimate. For him to rebuke the wind must have meant the evil one was intrinsically in it. Brothers and sisters in Christ, he even rebukes the demons. That means there must have been an evil persona on with it. But yet he waits until the storms start. And then we got our group over here. Man, we just wait till the carnage is over. That's Paul. That's Saul. He's got to be blinded for three days. Imagine what it would be like for you and I to be blinded for just a few minutes. For three days. Then he's got to wait for Ananias to come to, to, to cure him. Man, that's waiting late in the day. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you ever thought, think about Zechariah? That is the husband of uh, Elizabeth, the, the parents of John the Baptist. She shows up in the house with child. John the Baptist in the womb of Elizabeth immediately knows that he's present because he begins to dance in the womb. Even Elizabeth gets it. She says, how could it be that the ark of our Lord come to me? The same words King David said a thousand years before. And the only one that doesn't get it, <laughs> the high priest himself, Zechariah. It takes him six months to figure it out. And when he finally figures it out, he can speak. He's muted for six months. Brother and sister Christ, now here you and I sit 2,000 years later. Which category? Do we pray early and often? First things. First. Or do we pray only when problems start? Or we, we see him as the great lotto God, and we only pray to him after the carnage, as if there's nowhere else for us to go. Brother and sister Christ, and you wake up in the morning. First things first. What do you do? Do you turn on the television? You're expecting good news. You can get the bad news later in the day, brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, man, i got to check my emails and text messages. Now, that's a heck of a way to start a day. Man, brothers and sisters in Christ, well, maybe you need to read the sports page or the front page. How about if we start out the first thing in the morning is we just say one prayer. As our feet hit the ground, we sit on the edge of the bed, and God bless us if we kneel and say, Lord, here's my prayer to start the day. Well, no, you got to understand, Father, i got to have breakfast first. Okay. i got to have my coffee first. Actually, I can understand that argument, so I'm with you on that. But then immediately I need to go where I can be quiet and in one place in my house where I can pray, where I will not be disturbed and pray quietly. And I start my day. Because you know, when are you going to start? You're this group over here, right before trouble starts, you're on the way to work. You know how much love is waiting for you when you open that door. You're going to start praying now because you know trouble's on its way. Or do you wait till you walk in the door and that love fest just begins? It's the emails, it's the text messages, it's this, this, that. My brother and sister in Christ, you got to start it first and foremost for all you young people taking tests. Well, man, I'm going to pray right before I take it. <laughs> Don't worry, the good Lord's going to pass. A friend of mine takes the test, true story. Every answer is God knows, God knows, God knows. Great answer, teacher send back, God gets 100, you fail. 
brother and sister in Christ, first and foremost, remember, you and I only have one job. One job. We have many professions. It's a simple science. We came in the world on this day. You and I are going on on this day. These are non-negotiable dates. And as a result of such, brother and sister, on this day that you and I pass, your degrees will mean absolutely nothing. Your income and financial statement means even less. Your job status, your camp, your car, your, your boat, your golf clubs, don't you have to worry about it. It will be given to every niece and nephew that will destroy it within the month. And you know what's amazing, brother and sister in Christ? And there you and I stand, naked and alone, and we will be judged. And then there will be nothing left. And the question is going to be is, first and foremost, your job is to make it to heaven. That's your only job, to bring you and your family and your children to heaven. That's our job, first and foremost. And the only way to make sure we get there is we first and foremost start out every day with prayer. Please remember this. The fight takes place here on earth. If your wife or your husband or your children do not make it to heaven, you will never know it. You cannot be sad in heaven. Therefore, you will have no memory of them. Think what I just told you. The fight is right here. You cannot be sad in heaven because we will stand before the face of God. So if a relative or somebody close to us does not make it, we have no memory of that. We can't because we can't be sad in heaven. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I have one job and one job only. <laughs> we got to make it to heaven. And the only way to do it is first and foremost to start every day in prayer. Think about it. You do one prayer in the morning, one before each meal, just a quick prayer, and then one before you head into the pillar. You said five prayers in the course of a day. Do anything five times and see where you sit in the world. I promise you it will change your life. The grace will grow. You'll be able to take hits you never thought you could before. Things that used to irritate you won't even be a blip on the radar. My brother and sister Christ, I leave you with this. It is not a case of prioritizing your schedule. It is not a case of prioritizing your schedule. It is a case of scheduling your priorities. First things first. Amen? Amen. Man, I've been yelling for 10 minutes. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.